Hi guys, it's Professor Sears. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to change out the inner cannula here and put a new one in. And then we'll go into dressing change. So I have my kit together. This one looks similar to your kit, but I've kind of piecemealed the items together. Um, so it won't look quite like yours, but pretty close. So the first thing I want to do, we just finished suctioning our tracheostomy tube. We need to go ahead and change out this inner cannula. So what I'm going to do is I have everything ready. My patient's, you know, verbalized consent. He understands the procedure and the rationales. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And I'm sorry, if I wanted to change the dressing, what I would do, I could put on some regular gloves first and I can remove this old dressing. That way when I get sterile, I don't have to go back and do anything again. So just with my regular gloves, I'll look for coca. So color, odor, consistency, and amount. So maybe the, the patient has some small amount of thick yellowish sputum noted on here, no odor. And then I would throw this one out. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my sterile kit here, okay? So inside it looks similar to what you would see in yours, but I can go ahead and I can pull out my drape carefully without touching anything. I can drape my patient to make sure I don't get sputum on them. The next thing that I would do is grab my sterile gloves. I'm gonna reach across here so you can kind of see what I'm doing, but you can open them up. Remember, you can only touch the one inch border of the package, it's considered dirty. I can pick up my glove by this inner cuff. I'm gonna go ahead and slide my hand in here. Okay. Remember, you can't go back and touch the outside part of this cuff to fix it. If you don't like how it went on, just leave it. It's okay. I'm going to put my fingers inside the cuff here and keep my thumb away from me as I slide this one on. For visual reference, I'm going to have a, a sterile hand, and this will eventually become my dirty hand. Okay. So what I'm going to go ahead and do... I'm going to prepare everything in my tray here. So in mine, I'm saying I have my, my saline bottle here so I can touch this. If I didn't have one in my kit, what I would have done, I would pull the gloves out, open up my saline, pour it in, then go ahead and sterile glove. Okay, so I've got some gauze in here. I have my fenestrated dressing that we can use to replace at the very end. I'm going to go ahead and take some of these gauze and I would put them into my saline solution to moisten them for cleaning. Okay, I also have cotton tipped applicators so I can go ahead and put them in. It's easiest to set up your whole kit while you are still sterile. So you can, sterile can touch sterile, I can touch everything in this kit right now. So the next piece that I want to do is I have to pull out this old tracheostomy tube and then I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning. So this will stay sterile and this will be my quote unquote dirty hand. So at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and pull out this inner cannula. Please don't mind my styrofoam mannequin here. This is dirty. This gets disposed of, okay? What I would do, I'd be replacing this though. So I should have my next one open on a sterile package. So I pull the old one, I dispose of it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I wanna grab with sterile here. I'm gonna grab my new one and I'm gonna to touch only the little flanges on the side, the little pinch parts here. And then I can go ahead and insert this in very carefully and it's clipped on. So I didn't touch my patient at all to do that. The next part that I want to do is go ahead and start cleaning. So I'm gonna remove my cotton tipped applicator. I wanna hold it towards the end so I can keep my sterile hand sterile. This hand can stabilize the flange or the face plate here. And I'm gonna clean underneath that around the stoma site. I would trash this one, then I can go to my kit. I've got a second one here. I'm going to clean the other side around the stoma. This becomes trash. Then I can go back with my sterile hand into my sterile kit. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my saline moistened gauze. And I'm going to fold it up so I can make sure that I don't touch my patient. So I'm going to stabilize again here. 
and I'm going to use it to clean underneath of this, this flange close to the stoma near the skin. This is now trash. Sterile hand goes back into my kit and I can pick up the next one. I'm going to stabilize here and I'm going to clean underneath this around the stoma. This is trash. I can pick up another saline moistened gauze here. And what I can do is I can take this to clean the top of this face plate that goes in the trash. Now I want to go ahead, I'm going to grab my dry gauze and I've got to clean underneath first. So I'm stabilizing with this hand, cleaning with this one to dry. I'm going to grab another one and I'm going to dry underneath the other side. Okay, and then if I had another one, I could go ahead and use this to blot the top of the face plate dry here as well. So we don't want any extra moisture because it's a risk for skin breakdown for your patient. Okay, so at this point I'm ready to go ahead and put the dressing in. So my sterile hand can pick up my fenestrated dressing here. And this hand is going to kind of assist me by stabilizing this face plate. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to stabilize and I'm going to slide this under. Okay, so my new dressing is in. At this point, I'm done with my sterile procedure. I'm not touching the site anymore. So what I want to do is I want to take the trach ties. What you guys have in your kits are those long ribbons. So sometimes they have the Velcro ones where you slide it through and just Velcro it down. Those are really nice too. For the trach ties, you're going to go ahead and put one end through here. Make sure the ends are even. Slide it underneath your patient to the other side. I will take one side, put it through the little hole here, and then I'm going to go ahead and tie a square knot right over left, left over right. You want to make sure that you leave two finger widths of space between their neck and the trach tie so we don't cause a pressure injury. At this point, you can go ahead and cut off and remove the old trach ties. We wait to remove them because if I accidentally cut all the ties off and this patient coughs forcefully, this whole tracheostomy tube could come out of your patient. So for emergency purposes, we always keep an entire extra tracheostomy tube here at the head of the bed, and you should have the same size and one size smaller. That way you can get it in. If you had to put this in, we'll pull it out and we can show you. Uh, it may not come all the way out. So this one here, there's a little obturator that goes in here instead of this inner cannula. You want to lubricate the end and then you would slide the whole thing into your patient. Okay, You have to pull that plastic obturator out because it's blocking the tube and then you have to put in, oh, losing my cannula, put in your inner cannula. So I can touch the end but I want this part to stay sterile and again Pinch these little guys to clip it down. Don't just push really hard. And that is kind of the basics that we expect you guys to know for your tracheostomy, dressing change, and care. At this point, you would just clean up, do your safety checks. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my gloves. I would do some hand hygiene. I'm going to clean up all my supplies and dispose of them. I'm going to do safety checks to make sure that the patient doesn't need anything right now, that the bed is in the lowest position and locked, that I have an appropriate number of side rails up, um, and that their call bell is within reach. Those are all QSEN safety items to make sure that we avoid patient injuries and falls. And then I'm going to go ahead and thank the patient for their time, do hand hygiene on my way out the door.